Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new 10.4 inch Android tablet from Aldo Cube known as the K-Pad. One of the big reasons I wanted to take a look at this was price. This is coming in at around $130 and with the specs this has, this will definitely compete with the new 2021 Amazon Fire 10 HD. And with something like this, instead of getting Fire OS pre-installed like you would with those Amazon tablets, we do have full Android 11 with access to Google Play, but there are some drawbacks when it comes to these inexpensive tablets. I've had a few days to mess around with this tablet. When it comes to performance, this is dead on with that new Amazon Fire 10. It is using a different chip. We have 4 gigs of RAM in here, but they do perform very similarly when it comes to gaming, video playback, and emulation. When it comes to the design, it's a basic 10.4 inch tablet design. Around back, we have a 5 megapixel shooter. Around front, we also have a 5 megapixel selfie. And I can tell you that the front and rear cameras are much better than the ones that come in the Amazon Fire 10. So for $130, what kind of specs are we looking at with the K-Pad? Well, when it comes down to it, the CPU is a Unisoc Tiger 610. I've not tested the CPU yet. I've tested the Unisoc Tiger 618, and it's actually a really good performer. We have 8 cores with the 610. Two Cortex A75 cores running at 1.8 GHz and six A55 cores running at 1.8. For the GPU, we have the Mali G52 MP2, 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM in the $130 model, 64 GB of internal storage plus a micro SD card slot, and it's good up to 2 TB. The display is a 10.4 inch fully laminated IPS at 2000 by 1200. It's got dual speakers built in, AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, and they're claiming up to 10 hours of video playback or seven hours of web browsing. And when it comes to the operating system, this is running a super clean version of Android 11. Actually, there's only one non-Google app pre-installed on this tablet when you boot it up, and that's actually just all do Cube's wireless update application. So I'd say this is pretty much bloat-free. There's no extra games, there's no antivirus software or anything like that pre-installed. And we do have access to Google Play. When it comes to overall UI performance, the CPU they chose to use in here can definitely truck through Android 11. Like I mentioned, Google Play is ready to go. You don't have to do any extra steps. Just sign in with your Google account. You can download all of your favorite applications. When it comes to an Android tablet, I would much rather have a stock version of Android over something like Fire OS that comes pre-installed on Amazon tablets. But with Fire OS, we do get regular updates, and that's something you definitely need to look out for with these cheaper Android tablets. Sometimes you'll get, you know, one, two, maybe even three updates, but that's about it. Amazon has been throwing out regular updates for Fire OS, but uh, really the next thing you need to look out for when you're picking up a cheaper tablet is the Widevine version. If you're not familiar with Widevine, basically it's a certification process that allows these Android tablets to get HD content from your favorite streaming apps like Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, Disney Plus, and unfortunately a lot of these inexpensive tablets don't have the correct Widevine level. This one here happens to have level 3, which is basically the lowest we have. So when it comes to Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, all of your favorite streaming apps like that that require Widevine, you're only going to get standard definition content. And that's really unfortunate for a tablet like this because the screen looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it's a 10.4 inch IPS fully laminated at 1200 by 2000. So it would be theoretically possible to watch Netflix in 2K, but unfortunately with the Widevine level here, we're going to be stuck on standard definition. And when it comes to something like the Amazon Fire tablets, they do have Widevine level 1, so we can get HD content from our favorite apps, especially on the new Amazon Fire 10. So watching Netflix in 1080p is totally possible on the Fire tablets, but not this one here. Now when it comes to the stock YouTube app, we can go up to 1080p, no problem at all, and this little Unisoc 610 definitely has enough power to push through 1080p content at 60fps. And by the end of this video here, I only had 10 drop frames, I do have stats for nerds on screen, but 1080p playback is totally possible, and I really do think that this little chip could do 2K. You can install a third party YouTube application that allows us to do that, but I just stuck with the stock app, and it's working out pretty well. So the next thing I wanted to do was run a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench. On the left-hand side, we'll have the K-Pad. On the right-hand side, the 2021 Fire 10 Plus. Single core on the K-Pad, 343, multi, 1106. As you can see, we're real close with that Fire 10. And to tell you the truth, if I ran these several times, I might be able to match them up. 
Next up, we have Slingshot Extreme. This tests the GPU OpenGL performance on the K-Pad 1094 on the Fire HD 10 1147. So the HD 10 did nudge out the K-Pad by a little bit in this OpenGL GPU test. But the final one I ran was Antutu, and this was a bit odd because the K-Pad did come ahead by quite a bit. We got a 183,051 on the K-Pad, and when it comes to the 2021 Fire 10, 163,606. Now I'm actually really not sure why we scored so much higher here, but if we take a look at the individual scores, you can see that that Fire beat out the K-Pad, but in UX, the K-Pad came way ahead of the Fire. It's a little weird, and I did run this a couple times just to make sure. Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming with the K-Pad. First up, we have Minecraft, and with this one here, I did take the chunks down from 14, that was the stock setting, down to 10 just to get it to run as well as you're seeing here, and at 10 chunks, it does run very, very well. By the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, and any game that supports controllers from Google Play will work out that way. Next up, we have Asphalt 9. I know this is an older game. It's been on the market for a while, but on lower-end Android devices, I always like to test it because it does struggle when you got a lower-end CPU. But with this setup here on the K-Pad, as you can see, it's running at full speed. Had a really enjoyable experience with this game here. Taking it up a bit to Call of Duty Mobile. Now I actually forgot to go into the settings and turn this up to medium. I got a good feeling that it would run pretty well at medium with the frame rate set to high, but this is low, frame rate set to high, and it's really playable, especially with a controller. You could always grab this tablet and use the built-in touchscreen controls, but I would prefer using a controller as long as the game supports it. And the final game I wanted to test here was Genshin Impact. If you've ever tried to run this on your Android device, you know how hard it can be to run at 60. So we're not at 60 here. This is low, 30 FPS, but I'm really surprised to see it running this well. You do see some dips every once in a while, but that kind of comes with the territory with these lower and mid-range chips, especially with this game here. So it looks like the K-Pad can decently handle native Android gaming, but what about emulation? First up, we have N64. I'm using the standalone version of Mupin 64 Plus FZ. We're at 600 by 800, a little over native. This is F0, and it's running great. Going into this, I really didn't have any doubt that this thing wouldn't play N64. And even when it comes to games like 007, we have plenty of power here. So let's move over to Dreamcast. Using the Redream emulator, we're at 1280 by 960. It's running great. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. This is Sega Rally Championship. I tested a couple other games like DOA 2, which is a harder one to run with this emulator. And this little K-Pad can definitely handle it. Does an amazing job with Dreamcast, even upscaled a little bit. I think we could go a bit higher because I haven't noticed any issues at 1280 by 960. Moving up to PSP, we have Tekken 6. Not a super hard game to emulate, but it does give these lower end chips a run for its money. We're at 2x resolution, Vulcan back end, standalone version of PPSSPP, running at full speed. Really great performance here with this one, so let's move over to something a bit harder to emulate for PSP, and that's going to be Chains of Olympus. I did take this down to 1x, we're still using the Vulcan back end, but I gotta say, this is really great performance given the price point of this tablet. This game is just a harder one to emulate on an ARM device, and at 1x, it's looking really good. I don't even have any hacks on in the background, we're running at 60. And the final thing I wanted to test out was some GameCube emulation using Dolphin. Now I have no doubt that some easier to run games might run at full speed using something like Dolphin MMJ. One that comes to mind is Wind Waker, and I'm pretty sure we'd get some really good performance with it at 30 FPS, but this little tablet shouldn't be bought specifically for GameCube emulation. So overall, it's actually really not a bad tablet at that $130 price point. We got 4 gigs of RAM, a beautiful 10.4 inch IPS display, dual stereo speakers, up to 10 hours of video playback from that 6,000 milliamp hour battery, and real Android 11. It handles native Android gaming really well, and emulation up to PSP as you saw in this video. 
But there are those downsides, like no wide vine support, so we're going to be stuck with standard definition video from our favorite streaming apps besides YouTube, and the fact that software won't be supported for long on this tablet. I mean, that's just really how it is. I can't say 100% that we'll never get any more updates for this, but you kind of got to be ready to be stuck on what you have now, which is Android 11 with a security patch from August 5th, 2021. You know, we may never get another Android security patch on this tablet, and in my opinion, that's one of the main downsides to getting these inexpensive tablets. Tablets. But in the end, it's really up to you. If I knew they were going to support this tablet, I'd tell you to go out and buy it. But really, in the end, it's up to you. If you like the performance you saw with native Android gaming, emulation, and video playback with this thing, then uh, I'll leave a link for this in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Aldo Cube K pad, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.